bud. You trying to smoke the big bud last and say that shit. We've been serious business about it. It's really it's late right now. You know what I'm saying? Doing business hours, we don't smoke as much. You know what I'm saying? But we will burn it up in the office. Just to let them know, because it's like, really, man. We, we ain't we haven't gotten in the office building yet. We kind of like in a little, you know, complex because the studio's across the street. So we can really do what we want to do in here. And that's kind of the beauty of being here. Like, and I'm really thinking about even I don't care how many records kill the mic sell or whoever. I kind of like being over here, you know what I'm saying? It's really gated off. And what's, what's, what's going on with you and Dre? When we sat back, dog, you know, you let me hear the album in the studio. Right, right. I heard the album in the studio. Okay. And I sat back and I said, damn, two double CDs. Why you ain't on the same CD with Dre? Uh, because what happened was, when we started, initially Stankonia was supposed to be the double CD. Like, I mean, we just wanted to do something different. Like, both of us producing and, and having our own, you know what I'm saying, like kind of sound type of thing when we were separate. Was, was kind of trying to learn our sound. So we went in the lab separately, um, kind of on Stankonia, and then came together and did the together thing how we always do it. And with this record, it was like, before this album was coming, uh, Dre was like, you know, I'm gonna take a little time off and go do a little acting test, test out the silver screen and whatever. I was like, you know, that's my brother, you know what I'm saying? Go handle your business, you got a little dream, you wanna do it. Like, go do that and then, you know, at the same time, we already got so much music catalog because we stay recording like over probably like 80 songs that we just got just in the yo. So, um, he went out there for a minute and while he was out there, I was like, okay, Dre, while you out there doing that for a minute, I'm gonna go ahead and start my half of the album, you know? And he was like, Cool. And so I started started recording and started listening to jams and I started going out to LA to go hook up with Dre and I started letting him check out some of the stuff. He was like, yo man, he was like, hey man, I think it's time we should do that double CD thing now for real. Like, I mean you still, you know, I'm, I'm producing some on yours, you do some on me, rhyming on mine, same thing, same outcast thing, but it's just like, I mean you just can't confine two people in like, you know what I'm saying, in a room where there's so much creative juice flowing, so you gotta be having an outlet, man. So it's like it ain't no no nothing. We still outcast to the end. We still make records together and everything. We started out real young, like before we even got into music. Like it was like that was my dog. You know what I'm saying? I slept on the floor of his bedroom at his dad's house. My 11th grade, 12th grade uh, years of high school and, there, and the whole nine. So when we brought up the idea of what we wanted to do, it's like we were on kind of like you know we was thinking the same. But you know two. Two people don't never think the same all the time, you know right. what I'm saying? So what happened is like you start maturing, you start having different views, you start going this way, that way. Well, I want to try this, well, I want to try this. Which only makes the situation more beautiful than what it already is, you know what I'm saying? That's why right. I, I love it how it is, because it's just like, I mean, I give him the freedom to do what he wants, he give me the freedom to do what I want. It's never like, nah, man, you don't need to do it like that. Like, you need to keep like this, man. If you yeah. do this, so and so, so and so. Because I'm telling you right now, had Dre, if, if Dre, like really, if we wanted to act a donkey, if, really, Dre cut his hair, go back to the low fade, Jordan, Rayon shirt, Fila. I don't think they can handle that coat. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's like I don't yeah. gotta let them know. Like we we did that, we been there, but we still here doing what we do every day. You know? Dre on a piece of equipment now? Was it equipment? Yeah, no, 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 no. It's 50 50. Everything, everything 50 50. Everything 50 50 down the middle. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, um, I just, I'm so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I always gotta be doing. You know oh, what I'm saying? Like, congratulations so. on the Grammys. Did y'all see how it went down on the Grammys? Oh, sh sh come on, we, this is gonna be a tour. This is all access, so we, come on, follow, follow me. Break, break, break down the Grammy. Uh, we had, for the 2002 Grammy Awards, we had the, um, the you, see, you see the way he looked? He said, he said hold on, Coco, don't no, drop no, 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 <laughs> that. I know how it He said, don't drop that. You know what I'm saying? We, we was nominated, you know, for two categories, and we won, like, we got, like, three Grammys, and what they did was they put out a, a Grammy album, the time of the Grammys, and the album, went gold and this is the plaque that they send you. They give you another half a Grammy and you know, like your gold plaque and all that with the velvet in there. And it's like one of the dopest plaques that I ever seen somebody put the glass case in and everything like that. So, shots out to the Grammys. We got nominated again for our best performance by a duo or group for the song, The Whole World. This is the questions of all questions right here. Y'all ready for this joint? At the awards, the Grammy Awards, we saw Killer Mike up there on stage with you. We didn't see Dre. So obviously, you're playing certain seeds right now. Yeah, kind of, sort of. What, 
What's, what's what, what Killer Mike? What Killer Mike is getting ready to do? Killer what Mike, you trying to do with Killer Mike? Killer Mike is like a derringer in my boot. You feel me? Like he is the next MC that I feel with, with enough heart and know how to get out here and kill it. You know what I'm saying? And we've been knowing him for years now and it's just not coming to a head. We don't need no big and they mix in between balls. We just need to get this thing from the end on charge on the down low. Like R. Kelly and youngsters. But over 18 only to baby, I'm no perp. The single on the joint is called what? The Church? Yeah, that's my first single on my side. Break down the church. Church is really about, um, to me, it's like one of the singles on the album that is necessary right now for what's going on. You know, there's threats of war. Um, just the overall, the look at them, how the world is right now, like, is people ain't doing good, you know what I'm saying? People depressed, it's like, the kids is going crazy and everything. So besides, but instead of coming with just a, you know, a jam jam, because Outkast gonna come with a jam, I wanted to come with something that was gonna really hit somebody right here in the chest, you know what I'm saying? So, Song Church, is about really getting in touch with the higher power, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's God or Allah, whatever you want to call him, you know. But get in touch with your curator, and that's who you need to talk to, you know what I'm saying? And you talk and you, and, and you ask to receive certain blessings back, and as well, you got to do your part too, you know what I'm saying? So it's like just really to, to, to try to take away some of that wickedness that's going on right now. Yo, what's up? This is Big Boy, one half of Outcast right here. Dropping my blunt in the trash can on all access, so y'all see it all right here. You see it all for sure. Riggs Morales, uh, and off from Shady Records. I'm also artist representative here at Goliath Artists. Goliath Artists is a management company that represents Eminem, Exhibit, Cypress Hill, and FT. It's unknown right now, but you'll hear from him in a minute. You know, Hip hop heads will be familiar with some of my old work, uh, with The Source Magazine. I uh, used to work up there. I, used to, I left this music at her. I uh, did about five years up there. You know, um, used to run the Unsigned Hype column. Did quotables, mics, pretty much just about everything. You know, al alongside uh, Salwin, Smokey, Carlito, like that, that kind of golden age era of the magazine. Uh -huh. uh, still do write-ups for magazines on the side, you know. But it depends on what it is, though. But, you know, most of my past, you know, was heavily uh, journalism. Mm -hmm. you know, I got my start from writing. I got here through my writing endeavors. You know, uh, I left the source in 2000. Now, why did years. you leave the source? Uh, Cause as a writer, I had hit a plateau and I wanted to do something new. Uh -huh. You know, when you hit a plateau, you kind of stuck. Like, all right, now what? You know, I've interviewed just about everybody, like literally everybody. And, you know, unless you've got history in the game, everybody has the same story. Uh -huh. You know, had I not been here, I would have been in the streets, locked up, and yada, 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 you know, so it's like, music. <laughs> so then the music was getting more and more dense and more boring, so it's like, what else is there to write about, so I've always wanted to get into the NR, like even before I was writing, when I find out that there's someone that gets paid to go out and find shit, talent, like that's the job I want. So how did you get the Shady Records and r uh, situation, man, how did you get that popping? was is um I've known Paul Rosenberg who's the general manager of Shady Records uh around the same time that I've known Eminem you okay. know from the outside hype days because when I gave Eminem his outside hype I dealt with both uh Eminem and Paul who was his lawyer at the time Paul was an attorney first before he became general manager slash up and coming mobile. The funny thing is I was at the video shoot for uh for I'm Stem Shady or something Stem mm -hmm. Shady or yeah some Shady and D12 had asked me to manage them. Mm -hmm. So I went Just out of the blue, just out like, of yo, the blue, We had a relationship. And okay. You know that I knew my shit, which is very important, and I had a sense of, you know, what you know what they're all about. So they had asked me to manage them, and I felt, and I was like, let me ask Paul about that, because you don't do those kind of things without, you know, getting yeah. the okay. So I asked Paul, and Paul was like, basically to sum it all up, he was like, I'd like you to come up here. You gotta develop an artist like that, which a lot of A&Rs don't do. What I mean by development is take the time and tell this kid, all right, you sound good over these kind of beats. 
why don't you try this? Uh -huh. Okay, I think you sound great here. I know where you're trying to come across. Let me get you the right beat for that. What so that's what this? you do. You kind of artist find, development. you do artist, artist development as well. And artists, yeah, exactly. Because a and is like, it's, it's crazy because a and is no longer the thing that I looked up to it being. Like, I looked up to it like, wow, I get to work with artists and develop them. And as the years went by, I started realizing a lot of dudes just want the whole package deal. They want it fixed, done, ready to go. Bring me the music. Bring me. They don't take time to develop and uh -huh. pretty much nurture these artists. Which uh -huh. a lot. Of, you know, that takes a lot of you know responsibility. Revolves around nurturing artists. Basically, what happened was, you know, Eminem. Uh, uh, we've been trying to do something with Fifty for a while. Uh -huh. With Shady or with Goliath, but you know, um, with that, a lot of you know, a lot of a lot of baggage comes with that. You know, okay. 50 at the end of the day, you know, is one of the realest motherfuckers on the planet, and you know, with that comes that 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 extra baggage. <laughs> and, um, but it's that baggage that makes him authentic, so it makes it even more worthwhile. So what happened was I had Eminem's bodyguard, Box. He always he's always with Eminem. He's always out of town. Uh -huh. So when um, every time he comes into town. I stack up a bunch of mixtapes for him, like, yo, this is what you need to fuck with. Envy, DJ Boom, DJ Clue, Slay. I put them pile up and then for him. Then one day he came by to pick up his package, and I was like, this is dope, but you need to fuck with this. G Unit, Pile, Volume 1. So I gave him that. When he went to pick up M, he had that in the car. M was like, who's this? Like, this is 50 Cent. Give him the whole story. This was on a Thursday. By Saturday, 50 was getting flown out to LA. Wow. To, you know, to make that happen. You know, for that big thing to take place with him and Dre. Dre got involved. And, you know, so that's the extent that I was involved with. You hey, know? you was the middleman. <laughs> you was the pitch. You know? So, 50, man, you gotta come see my man Riggs with that platinum plaque, you man. Know? So, um, but the fact just even, you know, end of the day I don't care if there's no recognition for that just working with the dude and being involved in this project at any capacity is fucking amazing yeah yeah yo this Cuban link you about to check out the hot whips I'm parking lot pimping you understand We 
here all access the DVD magazine holding it down with B Kai, right? right? Pronounced correctly? Correctly. You got the hot custom female jerseys going on. Everybody in New York is swarming your store, buying the jerseys and the outfits. What, what made you come up with that concept? Um, basically, you know, I party a lot and I go to the clubs a lot. So I just did like flavor for like what I wear for myself and then I decided to just put some of the flavors into, into like jerseys. Now, what made you come up with the concept that the Yankee joint is crazy? The Yankee skirt with the, that's, that's, you're killing them right there with that one. I don't know. And you know what? With all the outfits that I do, it's like I have a vision. It's uh -huh. like, you know, I'll just be sleeping later and I just get this vision and I just uh -huh. get up and do it. So, it's just, all this is like visions. Okay. That you see. I see. It's crazy. So, how long ago did you start the company? Um, actually, I started with Kai, um, about a year ago. About a year ago? Okay, besides the soccer material, like the mesh, we use stretch and we use chiffon. We have some chiffon dresses uh -huh. and we also use leather. Yeah, okay. And we also use denim. We have a lot of denim pieces yeah. also. So basically a customer could kind of request any type of material and you could kind of give them that same right. mesh look. Right. Or what have you, but still give it that sex appeal to the, exactly. to the fit of the clothing. And then we add everything we have, we have like 5% lacquer inside of it, so you still get that fit no matter what you pick. If I ask you, but what is the turnaround time if someone was to order a jersey, say on a Monday? What would be the turnaround time for someone to get it back? If you order it on a Monday, you can get it by Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, and you do do overseas shipping? Oh, yeah, we things do overseas like that. shipping. Okay, everything. Cool. So, if there's anybody out there that wants your jersey, yeah, they we could do. definitely do you have a website or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, um, we have an email address. Okay, um, what is contact email? me at um, bakai at aol.com. That's B E K Y E. At AOL, and we also work in this on the construction, Bukai.com. Okay. Be there. Cool. Remember where you seen it first, all access. Right. This is Promise. I'm in the ATL at Jazzy T's, and I'm rolling with all access. Come holla at me, all right? That shit, baby. Megan and one bitch is Dirk Diggler. Uh-huh. These niggas know about it. I've been pimping before, niggas. The dream in my hood, I got tons of bitches, and I keep them all. A nigga never done with bitches. Rules of the game is simple, nigga. All you can eat. And if you seen my bitches, it's all you can eat. My shorties, they play their part like a down ass bitch. I got one that eat pussy and a sister suck dick. My broad from uptown, she my cleanup hitter. Cause when all my bitches is busy, she like when I come get her. And my Spanish mommy's annoying like Rosie Perez. Screaming I pop when I slip in the head. And wifey, the one the whole world knows is your top bitch. Not always your hottest pick, but still she's my. I got bitches that give me dough, bitches that only blow, bitches I used to fuck screaming, give me some more, you know how I go, now keep that bitch I style with and limit the time of the bitch that like to do foul shit, straight gangster, the same way I take my bitch, act up and all I'm access the DVD shit. magazine in the house once again, in the champagne room, the hot spot with my homegirl Ruby, what's the deal Ruby? How you doing? What's going on girl? Chilling at work. At work doing your thing. Yeah. So how long you been dancing, Ruby? I've been dancing for three years. Three years? Yeah. 
And what made you start dancing? Well, the money is good. Yeah. It's quick. And it's tax free. What is your favorite part of your body that you like the most? I like my thighs. I love my breasts. You like your thighs? Yeah. And you love your breasts. What yeah. are the guys what are the guys like the most about you? My smile. Yeah. And my breasts. And your breasts? Yeah. What will happen in the in the VIP room with you? Well, it's just dancing. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. What what do the guys try to do, or what would they ask you to do? What's some of the things that they might ask you to I do? I mean, they they you know they want extra because it's fantasy, but they just, <laughs> you know we just dancing. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. What what, I, what all I'm saying? Like I guess I mean this ain't PG. This ain't rated PG. <laughs> this is rated. This this is rated R. Oh, this is some real shit, uncensored live in the champagne room so i guess what's your wildest experience with a guy tell me about your wildest experience with dancing well some guys they they come in here and they want to be dressed like a woman and get out want, of here yeah some I, that was thugged the, that out was niggas the, thugged out niggas or well, just no, the just white cats yeah 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 <laughs> once in a while you get some of those that want you to you know give them a wig or something oh for real <laughs> That's yeah. wow. But it's, it's cool in here. Do you like men? Do you like women? Do you go both ways? What's, what's your no, way no, you at I with just, it? I, I like men. That's See? it. I'm strictly dick. Me. Strictly dick. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. But I'm a little curious. Are you? Yeah. What's so curious about a woman being with another woman? I, I heard that women know how to do another woman. So is that, I guess, when it comes to a sex act or being intimate with somebody, what would you like the most? Do you like somebody to eat you? Yeah, or? Okay. that's how I come. Okay, that's that's how you come. Yeah. But do you like, I mean, I know you, are you just the, the taker or you the receiver too? Do you give it back the same way? I, 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 I give it back the same way. Yeah. As long as I'm getting it right, I'm going to give it right. How's your brain game? Like, your brain game is good? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that means somebody got to be on point with their shit. Uh, it's coming to you. Yeah. You hear that, fellas? The brain game is on point. Mm -hmm. It's on point. Well, he accepts it. Yeah? Yeah. Is, is it hard for him to accept? No. It would be pretty hard for, for a dude to, you know, like a dude like me, I couldn't, my girl couldn't dance. I couldn't go for that. Yeah. Like, have you ever been in a predicament that you was like, damn, I don't know if I can do this anymore? Yeah. There was a couple of times where I, I didn't want to do it. tell dudes to get them going or what would you have to tell them to make them spend a little bit more money? Well, you can be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you better not hit them with that love shit. I love you shit. No, I mean, you can't reject the guy. Uh-huh. If he wants something, you got to make him think that he it's a possibility. It. Okay. But that doesn't mean that I'm lying. You know, it's just, you can't say no gotta think about it. So what do you mean by that? Give me, for instance, an example. If a guy wants to sleep with me or mm -hmm. do something with me and I... And, and I you know deep down inside you, you, you ain't gonna fuck with him. I'll be like, I gotta think about it, maybe. Uh -huh. So you mm -hmm. get propositioned a lot, a lot? Yeah, a lot. What do a lot of guys want to do to you the most? Eat me. Do they? They really want to pay yeah, you Yeah, yeah. And they pay you to do that? They want to pay. They want to pay just to do that. Wow. Yup. Nobody want. Nobody be like, nah, I want to. I want. Uh, I want. Once, I want my. Wow. Once, nah. I never got that. Nah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Yeah.